So there's been a lot of misinformation spewed all over social media and even all over mainstream legacy media about this National Association of Realtors lawsuit settlement. I'm not gonna get into the legal aspects of it. I am gonna talk about how I think based on understandings from our broker whose legal team has looked this 108 page document over inside and out. And by the way, it has not been approved by the courts yet. And we do believe that the Department of Justice is gonna step in and even ask for some other measures to be included in this settlement. So what does it mean to you? It means a class action lawsuit was filed in Missouri, determined that NAR and a bunch of large brokerages have colluded and taken advantage of the consumer. So uh, I completely disagree with all that. Having done this for 11 years, sold hundreds of houses, uh, been in the industry almost 20 years as an inspector, as a realtor, as a general contractor, that's just not true. Are there bad apples? Yeah, in every industry there's bad apples. So there's always been this kind of rumor, myth, whatever you wanna call it, that real estate fees are 6%. It's never been that. It's always been negotiable between a seller and the seller's uh, listing agent brokerage, what they will pay and what they will contribute to the buyer's agent. If the buyer brings them a qualified buyer and they accept their offer and close on the property. I would say most deals are around 6%. But not all. We've sold for half percent. We've sold for one percent, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, four, five, six, seven percent. Depends on the situation, depends on the property, depends on the market. There are so many variables there. But let's just cut through all that clutter and just get to the bottom line. This settlement, if approved by the court and not drastically changed due to the court's input or Department of Justice's input, means that two things are gonna happen now. Brokerages can no longer publish the buyer's co-op commission on the MLS, and all buyers must sign a broker-buyer representation agreement. Now, how does that play out? Let's just be realistic. It is a long, strenuous process to sell a property and to buy a property. It's very stressful. There's always things that can pop up that can kill the deal. There's just a lot of variables in that process. So having a professional, uh, very experienced, technology savvy agent on either side of the deal, whether you're selling your house or buying a house is gonna become more and more important. And I welcome that because there's too many part-timer fly-by-night agents who do one, two, three deals a year and do not do a good job. There are some that do a good job. I'm not trashing all the part-timers, but the majority of them don't. I know, I've been on the other side of the deal with them. It's gonna call for more professionalism, more experience, more knowledge, a bigger tool belt, better negotiation. Uh, and I welcome this. We welcome it because while we're supposed to be professionals and we have fiduciary duty to our clients, the minute you sign a buyer representation agreement or sign a listing agreement, you no longer become a customer, you become a client. And based on that, there's a fiduciary responsibility between the agent and that client. Our job is to serve your best interests, no matter what. And we take that very serious, Sheila and I do. And a lot of the agents we know do, but there's a large portion that don't. They're gonna go away because they now are gonna have to show value proposition. In other words, what are you bringing to the table to justify me paying your commission out of my pocket if that's required? Let's be clear about this too. I will continue to recommend to my selling clients to pay a buyer's, a buyer's commission to the agent. And here's why. If you want maximum exposure for your property, you want the most eyeballs on it possible, which drives up price, which drives down days on market, you need maximum exposure. Part of our job as listing agents, more than anything, is to be a great marketer. Write solid contracts and do an amazing job of exposing a property to as many potential buyers as possible. If you say, I'm not paying any kind of commission to a buyer's agent, you just cut your pool, probably a potential buyer's by half. In the past, we've seen buyer's agents uh, talk bad about properties, um, say I'm not gonna show that property because it's not paying a full 3% commission. And guess what? 
that listing agent went in, discounted the price to the seller, but did tell the seller they were going to discount the buyer's commission. And they don't find that out sometimes ever because they don't read the paperwork or ask the right questions. You want your property, if you're selling it, to be visible to as many potential buyers as possible through print media, through uh, sign technology, through uh, digital billboards, through videos, through uh, drone footage, on social media, on syndicated sites like Realtor.com, Zillow, Homes.com, those kinds of places. So going forward, if once this is ratified and uh, not ratified, but once this is finalized through the courts, you will no longer as a seller be able to say what you're willing to pay. And there's a lot of realtors out to say, oh, we're gonna put it on MLS, or non-MLS, we're gonna put it on showing time, we're gonna put it on our website. I have a strong inclination listening to our CEO, Robert Palmer at LPT Realty talk about this, that the Justice Department's gonna put a caboose on that and stop that. You're gonna have to pick up the phone like the old days, call the agent and say, are you offering a buyer compensation? And if you're not, now you gotta work out how you can negotiate this deal to get it paid through a seller concession or the buyers are gonna have to pay you out of their own pocket. I don't think that's gonna happen as often as people think. It is a strenuous, very stressful process of buying a house. We literally do, on either side of the deal, 200 to 300, not just, not just negotiations, but addendums, amendments, notices, disclosures, t uh, dealing with title companies, surveyors, home warranty companies, home inspectors, termite inspectors. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Uh, we have, Sheila and I have a long checklist we go through on every deal to make sure we don't miss something, okay? Because a good system and process is going to make your job as a realtor better and the experience your client has much better. That's why we have five-star reviews as we go out of our way to make sure that there's as little stress and burden on our clients as possible. Obviously, there's some things they have to deal with, but we try to be proactive to make sure there's no big surprises. I don't see people going to a selling agent and saying, hey, help me buy this house. Because the buyer agent, excuse me, if the buyer goes to the selling agent, in Texas, we have intermediary status. There's two kinds of intermediary. There's a sign where the broker assigns two realtors in his brokerage, one to represent the buyer, one to represent the seller, and they have fiduciary responsibility to those clients. I'm totally fine with that. Then there's intermediary where the listing agent has all the parties sign agreements saying they no longer represent anybody and they're a facilitator. That's a bad plan. We've never done it. I, I take that back. We've done it twice on family member situations, but never with a client that wasn't family. That's scary. In some states, they have dual agency where by some magic uh, wording, they represent both parties. That is absolutely impossible to represent two parties and serve both parties' best interests. Let's just be honest about that. I personally wish they would get rid of dual agency everywhere and they would get rid of intermediary where one agent, the listing agent, can facilitate between a buyer and a seller because I don't think it's representing our industry or either of those clients well. I know some of you agents out there are gonna throw a little hissy fit because you like double dipping on the commission, but the truth is you're not serving your client's best interest, period. Be honest about it. A buyer going directly to a listing agent and saying, can you write this up, is a dangerous thing for the buyer. When we have open houses, we have clients all the time come in and say, hey, can you help me buy this house? And I, you know what I tell them? No, I'm sorry, I can't. However, I can refer you to an amazing three, four agents you can interview who can represent your best interest. Yes, my seller will pay them a commission so that everybody's represented and it's a fair and equitable um, contract and look, I want to get the best deal I can for my clients, but I also have an ethical obligation to treat all parties fairly, not take advantage of anybody. So representation by each party, the buyer and the seller, in my book is absolutely necessary. You know, do you see somebody going to court and represent themselves? No, they have an attorney represent them because if they do, they're a fool. I believe that could be the same situation here. There's a reason why for sell by owners, very rarely close. Almost all of them end up hiring a realtor to sell their house because it's complicated. There's legal ramifications for not doing due process on some aspect of the contract. 
That's why we have errors and omissions insurance. That's why we have licensing classes and tests we have to take and continuing education. And we have a broker over us. The broker has legal counsel because things happen. So do not go out and buy a house without representation. A lot of people do it in the new construction market and they get completely taken advantage of by the builder because they are not represented. That sales rep, as nice as they are, as ethical as they want to try to be, they work for the builder. Their obligation, their responsibility is the builder, not to you, the consumer, buying that house. It's the same way on pre-owned if you go try to buy a house without being represented. We have buyer's guides, we have seller's guides, we have marketing plans, we have buyer understanding booklets. We have everything you need to understand and show you how we earn our money representing your best interests. So going forward, it's going to be more and more important for you as a consumer to do your due diligence and hire somebody who knows what they're doing to represent your best interest. I don't think real estate is going to change drastically. I think we're going to see the agent count drop some, not as much as some people are saying. I will tell you this, there's headlines all over social media and the news that are 100% inaccurate in how they represent this settlement, this proposed settlement agreement between NAR and this class action lawsuit. Hope this clarifies some of this stuff. We're always available to answer questions. Even if you're not our client, we'll share what we know. We'll tell you what your best course of action is. If you're in another market and you need a realtor and we can't help you, we'd love to connect you with somebody we know will serve your best interest and treat you the way you want to be treated, which is how we treat our clients. Hope you have an awesome and blessed weekend. Have a blessed Easter. Never forget the reason for this season. And we'll talk to you real soon. Take care.